<laughs> hey, everybody, and welcome back once again to For the Booze. For the Booze. For the booze. We're may- way more excited about being back than he's <laughs> making it seem, I promise. It's, I had to refamiliarize myself with all the but It's just been so, so long. So It has, but we've had a nice break. We've enjoyed it very much. What happened to us? Well, where, where did we go? Nowhere. But, I mean... <laughs> we were home. I mean, like we sort of disappeared for a couple months. We did. We did. Well... I don't know. Life. If anybody knows. Life happened. Life happens, yes. However, my handsome husband over here is writer, editor, social media, everything for the show. And two years straight of that was a lot. Yeah, it was getting to be be a little much. Yeah, we figured uh, holiday time would be a good time for us to take a break, regroup, let life happen, you know? So every, every year... I would just plan on, uh, probably not as long as this one. This one was, I mean, I was a little burnt. I was a little burnt out. Uh, unless we start getting an incredible amount of listeners every week. Not that you guys aren't important. You are very important. Absolutely. But unless we start getting, you know, a lot, a lot of listeners and, and the, the show becomes, uh, you know, monetary, we're going to start taking off all of December every year. Mm-hmm. You know, just as a break, just to, you know, recharge because it, it's day in, day out. We have children, you know, work, school stuff, and it's just, it gets to be a lot. It is. So we haven't left. Um, now, I know we kind of left things last time, like on a on a cliffhanger, if you will. <laughs> we were going to do the history of ghost hunting, but the more I started thinking about it, a lot of people are already going to know most of the stuff that we'd end up talking about, so I just... We're going to we're going to focus on it for one episode. Okay. And in this episode, we're going to talk about how did all this get started? And the reason that this came to even be was because w- our last episode, I believe was, you know, we talked about the controversy with Sam and and, and Colby mm-hmm. and Seth and we had brought up the uh, Cody and Satori, Cody and Satori but yep. the Fox sisters. Yes. I'm going to be real with everybody and and maybe it makes me a poser. But I didn't really know much about the Fox sisters until all this came up. You know, I knew uh, I knew a lot about modern day ghost hunting stuff. Mm-hmm. But when it came to how it all began, I guess I just never really felt like I needed to pay attention to it because, you know, it, it happened. It already happened. I don't know how else to say it. It already happened. So maybe, I just, maybe because it was so long ago kind of thing? I guess. I, I don't know. It's just a, something I just never felt like I needed to look into. So... I wanted to foc- I wanted to see, I wanted to, you know, focus in on how it all got started. And that's what we're going to talk about today. We're going to talk about where it all began. Yeah, yeah. So. Oh, I'm excited. We can thank Cody and Satori for something, I suppose. <laughs> for the spark of inspiration. <laughs> yeah. And if you guys hear a little humming in the background, it's because Megan is perpetually cold. And, yes. And has to have the heater on for some reason. I do. It's only set on 65, but oh, it's man. much colder than that in our basement. <laughs> and I am extremely anemic. So. Oh, and I also wanted to let you listeners know, uh, since we're coming back, and in uh, probably a couple months, maybe, mm-hmm. well, you're going to be able to catch us on YouTube doing videos. Yes. We are going to be watching, making fun of, critiquing, debunking um, videos uh, from around the interwebs. And you can also look forward to... Now, I, I have a feeling this is going to be uh, exciting for some people, maybe not so much for others. But we are going to have some of the if not the best, YouTube ghost hunting debunkers come on the show. Yes, we are trying to set up some interviews with certain people, and we are so very excited. Absolutely. They are some of our our favorites that we watch, I mean, almost all the time. Yes. (laughs) Uh, And they are. As far as I, in my opinion, they are the best at what they do. They are pretty well known, uh, you know, in the circles of, youtube and you know paranormal people. and you well, know? it's paranormal but it's people seeking the truth yeah. you know people who are tired of people making fake videos and mm-hmm. trying to sell them as real because they're not they're not and honestly i've had a lot of time to reflect on myself and like how we do this show and i'm not going to say that you guys don't get an authentic version of me but this isn't like if you met me in person this isn't me 
I am very opinionated. And I'm going to be honest, you know, a lot, most of these YouTube people, with the exception of, you know, some, are just straight up fake. They are fake. Yes. And I'm sorry if you can't tell the difference, but hopefully along the way, maybe we'll meet some people, introduce you to some YouTube channels that you can go check out and see for yourself, or at least make up your own mind. I will still never judge any of you listeners for what you believe. Never. That is up to you. Yeah. You know? We have our beliefs, you have yours, and it's all part of the same community. So it is what it is. And we are looking forward to starting to do get into the world of YouTube and yes. try something different. We've been and talking about doing YouTube videos for a really long time. We have. We, we're, we're trying to figure out how we want to go about it, how we want to do it, and maybe we're going to start doing some practice runs here soon. So... We're very excited, and we Practice. hope you are too. No, we're just gonna jump in. <laughs> we'll make, you know, we'll make like a hundred bad videos, and then boom, we'll make a decent one. Uh, <laughs> no. <laughs> so, anyways, let's get into this now. Today, I'm gonna tell you a story, but I want to get your thoughts on this because this is all pretty new to me as well. Okay. Uh, the only difference is, is I had to do this research, but it's been, you know, it's been months now. Yeah, I'm uh, excited. The first little bit that I want to read you comes from TalkDeath.com. It says, imagine a dimly, writ, a dimly lit room in an old, ornate, yet dilapidated mansion. A group of people silently huddled together around a table holding hands. One person calls out, asking for the spirits of the dead to communicate with the living. Taps are heard through the ether before the table begins to violently shake. Then, silence. This image is not far from the truth of spiritualism in its early form. If we look to the origins of spiritualism, how it began, where it was popularized, and who practiced it, such scenes sit at its heart. Now, spiritualism, for those who don't know, is the belief that the spirits of the dead can interact and communicate with the living. Think Casper. Hmm. The spiritualists believe that the dead were not only capable of communicating with us, but that they could impart ethical and moral knowledge to the living. At its height in the 19th century, more than 8 million Americans claimed to believe in the tenets of spiritualism. While spiritualism does not enjoy the broad appeal it once did, it remains today in many forms. So that's kind of the beginning of, of where we're going to go. Okay. I... Uh, to be honest, I thought that the practice of what we would consider ghost hunting and paranormal, you know, anything mm -hmm. started way before it did, but it's not the case. Really? Now, there have been people throughout history that have claimed to be able to talk to spirits and stuff like that. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, the way we perceive paranormal investigating or even just speaking to spirits is... Not even 200 years old. Hmm. It's, it started in the U.S. of all places. You know, I, I can believe that. But see, I wouldn't. <laughs> I would think. I, can. I would think it would have started more like maybe in England, where they have a much long, you know, uh, much farther back in history. Mm -hmm. You know, there's way more claims of. Well, let me rephrase that. There's way more of what I would perceive as legitimate claims of paranormal activity. So it. To me, I don't know. It just doesn't feel right that it starts in where it starts. I don't know, because I think I think maybe, like, not to say anything about any other country, but, like, the United States, like, has always kind of been at the forefront of most things, trying to get things started, and, I mean, just anything, really, over the course of history, so. Yeah, I guess. I don't know. <laughs> Yeah, I don't know. It just seems weird to me. So it goes on to say, Though there are many different approaches to spiritualism, they generally share a few common beliefs and principles. One of the most foundational of these beliefs is that the soul continues to exist after our physical bodies die. From this comes the belief that it is possible to communicate with spirits after someone has died, uh -huh. and that after death, the soul has the potential to change over time. 
A belief in a god is also usually characteristic of spiritualists, though this god is often referred to as the, quote, infinite intelligence. Now, the planet and all the natural world are then seen as expressions and manifestations of the infinite intelligence. Make no mistake, however, the history of spiritualism is intimately connected with Western Protestant ethics. Spiritualists tended to disbelieve many Christian tenets, including the primacy of works and faith and salvation, the duality of heaven and hell, and the Bible as a source of ultimate knowledge. Instead, spiritualists believe that the spirits were the source of knowledge and that the supernatural world was composed of a uh, hierarch- hierarch- I can't say the word. You know what I'm trying to say. Hierarchy? Hierarchical spheres. <laughs> Some words just don't come out. That spirits progress through. While many devout spiritualists sought to distance themselves from the church and Judeo-Christian concepts of the supernatural, the welcoming public were mainly Christian. The promise of communication with the deceased proved to be an enticing one. And now that's an, an, another thing that kind of stands out to me because I guess there's kind of like a stigma behind it being like a look down upon with people of faith, yeah. you know, to believe yeah. in the afterlife because you believe in heaven. But I guess at one point in time, it was mainly carried by Christians. Hmm. These mediums play a crucial role in spiritualist communities as spirits are seen as sources of potential guidance and knowledge. This understanding is based in the idea that the spirits are able to learn and evolve beyond the confines of the corporeal world. Therefore, if they can be communicated with, they may offer valuable insights and information about life, both on Earth and beyond. Though anyone has the ability to receive signs or messages from spirits, spiritualists believe that formal communication sessions or seances should be held by mediums. Now, some of the foundational writing that would influence the 19th century spiritualists came from Emanuel Swedenborg, 1688 to 1772, and Franz Mesmer, 1734 to 1815. Swedenborg claimed to be able to communicate with the spirit world while awake. He would go into great detail regarding the structure of the spirit world and argued that spirits were intermediaries between God and humans. Mesmer was famous for being able to induce trance-like states in subjects, hence being mesmerized. While hypnotized, Mesmer claims he could cause subjects to contact supernatural beings. So, so like hypnosis, but to talk to spirits? Yes. Oh, okay. <laughs> now, <laughs> I mean, this, okay. is, this is where the story is really going to begin. Because while even though this all went on, this is not where it started to pick up its popularity. It's actually what came of this that became what we would perceive as modern-day paranormal stuff. Okay. So today's story starts in a little hamlet in New York State in the township of Arcadia, 30 miles east of Rochester, New York. This is why I was saying of all places. It, yeah. New yeah. York City. Uh, yeah. <laughs> that's all, okay. That's all I can think of. <laughs> Now, Hydesville is considered the birthplace of 19th century spiritualism. There, in the house of John D. Fox, his wife Margaret, and their daughters. The two Fox sisters, eventually joined by a third older sister living in Rochester, asked questions to which Taps responded intelligently. Various neighbors were called in, and one displayed great ingenuity in reciting letters of the alphabet, C. And eliciting responses e. by taps associated e. with letters. Well, that sounds familiar. Doesn't it? The taps were a forerunner of the technique of, quote, spirit communication in the development of spiritualism. Now, I know that we kind of left at the height. <laughs> we kind of left it at a, at a bad time, but... Yeah. This does sound awful, awfully familiar. And I remember a lot of videos where people were, like making the comparison. Oh, yeah. And they tried to, like, it's nothing like that. Well, unfortunately, from history books, it sounds exactly like that. 
Uh, yeah. I mean, exactly like that. Mm -hmm. In the bedroom of two young girls living in a farm in a farmhouse in Hydesville, New York, on a late March day in 1848, Margareta Maggie Fox was 14, and Kate, her 11-year-old sister, stopped a neighbor eager to share an odd and frightening phenomenon. Every night around bedtime, they said they heard a series of taps on the walls and furniture, taps that seemed to manifest with a peculiar otherworldly intelligence. The neighbor, skeptical, came to see for herself, joining the girls in the small chamber they shared with their parents. While Maggie and Kate huddled together on their bed, their mother, Margaret, began the demonstration. Quote, Now count to five, she ordered, and the room shook with the sound of five heavy thuds. Count to fifteen, she commanded, and the mysterious presence obeyed. Next, she asked it to tell the neighbor's age. Thirty-three distinct taps followed. Quote, If you are an injured spirit, unquote, she continued, manifested by three taps, and of course it did. Hmm. The conjuring house around Halloween is is really uh, ringing with me in this one. Yeah. Now, Margaret Fox did not seem to consider the date, March 31st, April Fool's Eve, and the possibility that her daughters were frightened not by an unseen presence, but by the expected success of their prank. The Fox family deserted the house and sent Maggie and Kate to live with their older sister, Leah Fox Fish, in Rochester. Now, the story might have died there were it not for the fact that Rochester was a hotbed for reform and religious activity. The same vicinity, the Five Finger Lakes region of New York State, gave birth to both Mormonism and Millerism, the precursor to the Seventh-day Adventism. Oh, uh, I did not know that. Okay. Yes. Mill- Millerism. I, I've never heard of that one. Hmm. I mean, obviously, I've heard of Mormonism because of where we live, but right. uh, Millerism, I'd have to look that up. I'm not, I'm not real sure what that means. Hmm. So if you're a Millerism, a Millerist, a Millerianity, or I don't know what you call yourselves, <laughs> Millerianity. out there, message me. I, w- I would love to know what this is because yeah. I've never heard of it before. So give me the rundown. A community leaders, Isaac and Amy Post, were intrigued by the Fox sisters' story and by the subsequent rumor that the spirit likely belonged to a peddler who had been murdered in the farmhouse five years beforehand. A group of Rochester residents examined the cellar of the Fox's home, uncovering strands of hair and what appeared to be bone fragments. The Posts invited the girls to a gathering at their home anxious to see if they could communicate with spirits in another location. Quote, I suppose I went with as much unbelief as Thomas felt when he was introduced to Jesus he had ascended, Isaac Post wrote. But he was swayed by, quote, very distinct thumps under the floor and several apparent answers. People were very easily fooled. Yeah. (laughs) Nobody was like, show me your feet. Yeah. Nobody questioned Anything. Well, this this story is going to come with an unexpected ending. Oh. Because, you know, we'll get, I, I don't want to give it away because I want to I talk about it at the end. Now, he was further convinced when Leah Fox also proved to be a medium, communicating with the Post's recently deceased daughter. The Post's rented at the largest hall in Rochester and 400 people came to hear the mysterious noises. Jesus. Afterward, Amy Post accompanied the sisters to a private chamber where they disrobed and were examined by a committee of skeptics who found no evidence of a hoax. Mm. Get naked, girls. Uh, you know, you got to remember, these girls are 14 and 11. Yeah. That's uh, awkward. And uh, to, uh, just to throw it out there, like, most people in charge back then were dudes. Yeah. So oh, a bunch yeah. of... They're uh, just like, hey, yep, close off. That sounds like a pervy... That's not real that's pervy. Gross. It's It's very pervy. Yep. Now, the idea that one could communicate with spirits was hardly new. The Bible contains hundreds of references to angels and administering to man. But the movement known as modern spiritualism sprang from several distinct revolutionary philosophies and characters. 
The ideas and practices of Franz Anton Mesmer, an 18th century Australian healer, had spread to the United States by the 1840s and captivated the country. Mesmer pr proposed that everything in the universe, including the human body, was governed by a, quote, magnetic fluid that could become imbalanced, causing illness. Now, by waving his hands over a patient's body, he induced a, quote, mesmerized hypnotic state that allowed him to manipulate the magnetic force and restore health. Sounds like a, like a video game. Um, what? <laughs> Pretty sure how they do that to me in Red Dead Redemption. <laughs> what? Now, amateur mesmerists became a popular attraction at parties and in parlors, a few proving skillful enough to attract paying customers. Some who awakened from a mesmeric trance claimed to have experienced uh, visions of spirits from another dimension. I mean, and but that still goes on today, you know, like... Uh, people claim to see all kinds of stuff when they when they go under or when they uh, die and come back. And yeah, I mean, you do go like into like a dreamlike state kind of thing. So of course, your brain's just gonna go all over the place. Yeah, I mean, and there's there have been studies about this, none that I've read too much into, but uh, your your body will tend to like see things. Yeah, you know, especially like if you're in a tr uh, like in a state of trauma or. You know, or your body perceives you're in trouble. Or it could also, like, uh, it could hallucinate things to comfort you. Yeah. Oh, absolutely. You know, Especially, and, like, fight or flight stuff. Yeah. And, but what's more comforting than a past loved one? Yeah. That, that you, you know, so it's it's hard to say what people see uh, when in these times. But. Now, at the same time, the ideas of Emanuel Swedenborg, an 18th century Swedish philosopher and mystic, also surged in popularity. Swedenborg described an afterlife consisting of three heavens, three hells, and an interim destination, the world of the spirits, where everyone went immediately upon dying, and which was more or less similar to what they were accustomed to on earth. Now, self-love drove one toward the varying degrees of hell. Love for others elevated one to the heavens. He would say, quote, the Lord casts no one into hell. But those who are there have deliberately cast themselves into it and keep themselves there. Now, he also claimed to have to have seen and talked with spirits on all of the planes. And I don't mean airplanes, I mean planes of existence. Now, 75 years later, the 19th century American seer Andrew Jackson Davis, who would become known as the, quote, John the Baptist of modern spiritualism, Combine these two ideologies, claiming that Swedenborg spirit spoke to him during a series of mesmeric trances. This happens today where people are like, oh, this this is like the people around the Ouija board are like, well, I talked to Hitler. Yeah. You know, it's, uh, it's just it's so ridiculous. I'm sorry. I don't, I don't want to let the cat out of the bag here, but I have a hard time swallowing a lot of this. So honestly... It's really hard to do an episode like this and not just, like, spew my disdain on a lot of stuff <laughs> because a lot of it is so in my – it's just so made up, and it's it's blatantly made up, you know, I, in my opinion. Uh, okay. As we a, try to be so freaking, like, nice that we don't, like, want to offend anybody. But I, know. I But, I mean, it's garbage. Okay. Well, as a believer, I I do think that – Ouija boards and things like that. Like people may talk to something or someone, possibly, but like to put a specific name like Hitler on it. Oh, it was him. Like what? Well, I mean, that's and that's exactly what they're talking about here. Right. Is like, oh, you know, we we talked to this person. Like, well, I don't know if I believe you. Are you sure about that? Are you sure it was that person? Well, see, as as I, honestly, you know, I have to tell our listeners, like the the. The longer we've been doing this show, the mm -hmm. more and more time I'm becoming more and more of a non-believer. You know, like I want to believe because I have experienced things. Mm -hmm. But the amount of crap crap that we come yeah. across makes me question the things that I've seen with my own eyes and the things that I've experienced myself. So I don't know where I stand anymore, Booze Crew. Honestly, I really don't. I think it. I, th I think just the amount of stuff that's put out that should be claimed for entertainment purposes only, as we love to say on this show. Yeah. 
um, I think it's kind of washing out all the legitimacy, all the real stuff. It is. I really do. Because I mean, I've had experiences since I was eight years old. I will never forget it. I know exactly how old I was when it started happening. And it's just, they, they make it seem like it, these experiences now they can sometimes be outrageously and over the top crazy experiences. Yes. Mm -hmm. But for the most part, it's just tiny little things, you know, like, yes, there are uh, possessions or, you know, like crazy things mm. can happen, mm -hmm. but I feel like it's so minimal. Okay. So, so, right. so minimal. So you, you've had experience since you were a kid. Mm -hmm. Do you experience something every time you enter a building of any kind, anywhere you go? Absolutely not. But, and definitely not 20 things in a span of 40 well, you minutes. You know, that's crazy because if you believe in the world of YouTube wholeheartedly, then you would believe that there are certain people that just go in anywhere and have nonstop activity. Yeah. And like I like to say, I am a full believer. I am. But not to the extent that everybody is making paranormal stuff out to be. It's uh, just no. You mean no. you mean like online? Yeah, hundred percent. Well, you have to throw that out there because people are gonna <laughs> well, they're, they're, they're gonna they're gonna want to know. <laughs> but yeah, I agree. the 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 YouTube stuff is really starting to. It's crazy. It's starting to kill it for me. Oh yeah, it's crazy. And honestly, we we took a really long break from watching anything. We did uh, paranormal. Yep. And now it's most of the time we're just watching it to laugh at it. Yeah. Because it's so bad. And we watch a lot of. Like debunker yeah, stuff. Mostly. Honestly, that's mostly what we watch. Now. Yeah, it is. But anyways, we're going to go ahead and take a break. We're going to take a little ad break. Maybe one day we'll have our own ads to throw in here by, you know, like sponsors. You know, we're out here. We're doing the thing. Hello. Yeah, we'd like to make some money doing this. <laughs> but uh, yeah, we'll take a little break and we'll be right back, Booze Crew. <laughs> And now, Booze Crew, back to the show. <laughs> okay, now we're back. So Davis recorded the content of these messages and in 1847 published them in a voluminous tome titled The Principles of Nature, Her Divine Revelations and a Voice to Mankind. Quote, it is a truth, he asserted predicting the rise of spiritualism, quote, that spirits commune with one another while one is in the body and the other in the higher spheres. All the world will hail with delight the ushering of a new era when the interiors of men will be opened and the spiritual communication will be established. Oh, well, that's <laughs> deep. I mean, that statement, I'm... I'm I'm not mad at that statement. Mm -hmm. I'm mad at what that statement becomes, you know, later down the down the line. But I mean, he's saying once you know your spirit, you know, communes to where it's supposed to go, and is in the higher, I, I'm guessing heaven is what they meant because it was all based on on religion, right? That you would, it, there would be an era where you people would be open enough to to speak with the dead. I don't know. I'm not really mad at the statement. It's just what it turns into later on, I guess. Now, Davis believed his prediction materialized just a year later, on the very day the Fox sisters first channeled spirits in their bedroom. Quote, About daylight this morning, a warm, breath a warm breathing passed over my face, and I heard a voice, tender and strong, saying, Quote, Brother, the good work has begun. Behold, a living demonstration is born. <laughs> uh, okay. I mean, he can write. Yeah. It's epic. He's like, it is upon us. <laughs> the time has come. <laughs> now, upon hearing of the Rochester incident, Davis invited the Fox sisters to his home in New York City to witness their medium capabilities for himself. Joining his cause with the sisters' ghostly manifestations elevated his stature from obscure prophet to recognized leader of a mass movement, one that appealed to increasing numbers of Americans inclined to reject the gloomy Calvinistic doctrine of predestination and embrace the form-minded optimism of the mid-19th century. Now, unlike their Christian contemporaries, Americans who adopted spiritualism believed that they had in their own salvation and direct communication with those who had passed 
offered the insight into the ultimate fate of their own souls. Mm. So, I mean, they believed. They truly believed. Yeah. You know, these people followed because they well, they really wanted this. They truly believed. Now, Maggie, Kate, and Lee Fox embarked on a professional tour to spread word of the spirits, booking a suite fittingly at Barnum's Hotel on the corner of Broadway and Maiden Lane, an establishment owned by a cousin of the famed showman, uh, P.T. Barnum. Thank you, sir. Oh, okay. Now, an editorial in the Scientific American scoffed at their arrival, calling the girls the, quote, spiritual knockers from Rochester. <laughs> <laughs> it's a pretty good old school burn. <laughs> oh, my Man. God. Oh, that was funny. Now, they conducted their sessions in the hotel's parlor, inviting as many as 30 attendees to gather around a large table at the hours of 10 a.m., 5 p.m., and 8 p.m., taking an occasional private meeting in between. You know what else this reminds me of? Um, during the whole Cody and Satori business, mm-hmm. they claim that they didn't do this to make money, and but you can find that there's all these tour dates and you can hire them. Right. And they work out at the Conjuring House. So pro bono? It's not. Well, that's the problem. It's not pro uh, bono. Exactly. And, and not to mention they've been on TV, so they're getting paid for that. They're not doing any of this for free. Mm. You know, no matter... It doesn't matter how they say it. They're getting paid for doing this. That's why they keep doing it. Mm-hmm. If they didn't, why would they ever come out with it? Why wouldn't they just be at home or uh, you'd never hear about them? Because they'd just be changing the world, you know? It is what it is, I guess. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Now, admission at the time was $1, and visitors included preeminent members of New York society, Horace Greeley, and influential editor of the New York Times Tribune, uh, James Fenimore Cooper, editor and poet William Cullen Bryant and abolitionist William Lloyd Garrison who witnessed a session in which the spirits tapped in time to a popular song and spelled out a message quote spiritualism will work miracles in the cause of reform Mm. deep thinking spirits clearly (laughs) clearly (laughs) Clearly. (laughs) you'll think Lee stayed in New York, entertaining callers in a seance room, while Kate and Maggie took the show to other cities, among them Cleveland, Cincinnati, Columbus, St. Louis, Washington, D.C., and Philadelphia, where one visitor, explorer Elisha Kent Kane, succumbed to Maggie's charms even as he deemed her a fraud, although he couldn't prove how the sounds were made. So he's like, you're fake, but man, you're hot. (laughs) Dang. I, just wanna, I like you, girl. I just want to climb in them ghost pants, girl. <laughs> oh, and by the way, Cleveland, beautiful city. Uh, nothing wrong with it. Uh, amazing place. So pretty. Yeah, it's, uh, it's lovely. Just, you know, I just want to make sure that every time we mention that, we say that. If anybody remembers that episode. Yeah, go back and listen to the episode that we talked about. I don't remember. Uh, Franklin Castle. <laughs> don't want to offend anybody. Cleveland, land, of, land of the beautiful. Gorgeous. <sighs> stunning now quote after a whole month's trial i could make nothing of them therefore they are a great mystery unquote now he courted maggie 13 years his junior and encouraged her to give up her quote life of dreary sameness and suspected deceit so like ew 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 ew. sorry but no i mean did it say how much time had gone by I mean, if she's an adult, it is what it is. Mm. But like he was straight up, like he was like, "I know you're faking." I wonder if he, I wonder if she ever like confided in him. Was like, "Hey, this is how we do." You right, you right. Yeah, right. <laughs> I wonder. She acquiesced, retiring to attend school at Kane's behest and expense, and married him shortly before his untimely death in 1857. Now, to honor his memory, she converted to to Catholicism as Cain, a Presbyterian, had always encouraged. Now, he seemed to think the faith's ornate iconography and sense of mystery would appeal to her. In mourning, she began drinking heavily and vowed to keep her promise to Cain to, quote, holy and forever abandon spiritualism. Now, Kate, meanwhile, married a devout spiritualist and continued to develop her medium powers, translating spirit messages into astonishing and unprecedented ways, communicating 
Two messages simultaneously, writing one while speaking the other, transcribing head. messages in I reverse script, utilizing blank cards upon which words seemed to spontaneously appear. They had a hustle. Yeah. They had a hustle. And oh, yeah. It's it's kind of like the the mag- the magicians, the mentalists. Like, mm-hmm. I mean, to be able to like say something and write something, that's, that's, pretty, that's pretty talented. Yeah. I mean, I still think it's fake, but that's talent. I hundred I I struggle just taking notes of the same words I'm hearing. Yeah, you know what I mean. Just speaking, like, just speaking my first language, English, like <laughs> at one sentence at a time. Because words are hard. We should try. <laughs> Somebody out there is going to know what that is. Oh, we should we should try that. We should like try to sit down in the living room and write something and but say something else. N- no, be hard. No, I I I'm not even gonna try that. I can't even speak regular words. Yeah, I know. so they know. We all know. (laughs) Funny. Now, during sessions with a wealthy banker, Charles Livermore, she summoned both the man's deceased wife and the ghost of Benjamin Franklin, who announced his identity by writing his name on a card. Now, her business boomed during and after the Civil War, as increasing numbers of the bereaved found solace in spiritualism. A prominent spiritualist, Emma Harding, Harding, Hardinge, something like that, H-A-R-D-I-N-G-E, wrote that the war added two million new believers to the movement, and by the 1880s, there were an estimated eight million spiritualists in the United States and Europe. That's that's a lot of people. Well, and back then, there wasn't seven billion people on on the planet. Right, that's a lot of the population. Now, these new practitioners, seduced by the flamboyance of the Gilded Age, expected miracles, like Kate's summoning of full-fledged apparitions, at every seance. They wanted this every time. Now, it was wearying, both to the movement and to Kate herself, and she, too, began to drink. Oh, boy. Now, on October 21st, 1888, the New York World published an interview with Maggie Fox in anticipation of her appearance that evening at the New York Academy of Music, where she would publicly denounce spiritualism. She was paid $1,500 for her exclusive story. Her main motivation, however, was rage at her sister Leah and other leading spiritualists who had publicly chastised Kate for her drinking and accused her of being unable to care for her two young children. Cat bite. I think it goes beyond that, honestly, because they're like uh, they're like slamming her in media and everything. Because you got to remember, at the time, they're they're famous. They're right, real famous. Right, right. Now, Kate planned to be in the audience when Maggie gave her speech, lending her tactic or her tacit support. Quote, my sister Katie and myself were very young children when this horrible deception began. Mm. At night, when we went to bed, we used to tie apples on a string and move the string up and down, causing the apple to bump the floor. And we would drop the apple on the floor, making a strange noise every time it would rebound. Mm. So, I want everybody, the story's not over, but I want everybody to take that in. What started everybody's paranormal love today was based on a lie. Mm-hmm. I'm not saying that, that. I'm not saying it makes everything fake. Right. But I'm saying that had it not been for three young sisters in a farmhouse in New York faking their way through it, nobody would probably really care. Coming into the limelight with a lie. A total lie. Yeah. Wow. Now, the sisters graduated from apple dropping to manipulating their knuckles, joints, and toes to make tapping sounds. Hmm. Interesting. Mm. Now, quote, A great many people, when they hear the rapping, imagine at once that the spirits are touching them. It is a very common delusion. Some very wealthy people came to see me some years ago and when I lived on 42nd Street and I did some rappings for them. I made the spirit rap on the chair and one of the ladies cried out, quote, I feel the spirit tapping me on the shoulder. Of course, that was pure imagination, unquote, she said. Mm. So this is one of the sisters straight up admitting yeah. that it's fake. Yep. That it is not true. Wow. That's Tell, the, telling all their secrets. Oh, yeah. People were not happy about it. Yeah, I'm sure. Now she offered a demonstration, removing her shoe and placing her right foot upon a wooden stool. The room fell silent, and 
the, the room fell silent and still and was rewarded with a number of short little taps. Quote, there stood a black-robed, sharp-faced widow, the New York Herald reported, quote, working her big toe and solemnly de- declaring that it was in this way she created the excitement that has driven so many persons to suicide or insanity. One moment, it was ludicrous. The next, it was weird. Unquote. Wow. <clears throat> so, she demonstrated it. What else did they need to do? This wow. is all right. This is the perfect example of the YouTube stuff today. Yep. It they're faking it, yet it doesn't matter how fake it is, how ridiculous it is. People still are just like, no, it's fine. Mm-hmm. It's fine. But uh, is it though? I mean, it's starting not to be. Now Maggie insisted that her sister Lee, I think Leah knew that the tappings were fake all along and greedily exploited her younger sisters. Before exiting the stage, she thanked God that she was able to expose spiritualism. Now, the mainstream press called the incident, quote, a death blow to the movement, and spiritualists quickly took sides. Shortly after Maggie's confession, the spirit of Samuel B. Britton, former publisher of the Spiritual Telegraph, appeared during a seance to offer a sympathetic opinion. Although Maggie was an authentic medium, he acknowledged, quote, the band of spirits attending during the early part of her career, unquote, had been usurped by, quote, other unseen intelligence who are not scrupulous in their dealings with humanity, unquote. Other living spiritualists change are charged that Maggie's change of heart was wholly mercenary, since she had failed to make a living as a medium, she sought to profit by becoming one of spiritualism's fiercest critics. So, I mean, they're just saying, like, uh, she doesn't believe anymore, so she's trying to say we're fake. So, that, like, dude, this is... Her, her, not us. Yeah, her, I not mean, us. It, this is honestly such a crazy... It's such a crazy story, wow. right? Because they make this up as kids... They become super famous. One of them finally feels the guilt of it and is like, "This it's fake. And this is how we do it. Mm-hmm. And their response is, we're going to have a ghost say that she's jelly. <sighs> right? And she was the most famous one. Yeah. Right? So, so she's like ringleader oh, coming man. out like, hey, this, this, that, and the other yeah. thing is how we do this. This is, all right, so a lot of the stuff nowadays, right, are like the debunkers calling out the YouTubers and the YouTubers being like, it's easy to say that from behind a keyboard because you're not here. Mm-hmm. Right? It's the same thing. It's just like uh, you you just make them out to be the bad guy. Like, it, it's like the diversion. Like, don't look at us and what we're doing. Don't right. look at what they're doing. What they're doing is bad. It's uh, it, it's, it's to- the same it's, thing. It's toxic. It's very toxic. It's extremely toxic. Yeah. Now, whatever her motive, Maggie recanted her confession one year later. Oh. Insisting that her spirit guides had beseeched her to do so. Her reversal prompted more disgust from devoted spiritualists, many of whom failed to recognize her at a subsequent debate at the Manhattan Liberal Club. She's like, I'm tired of being broke. What? Wait, what? Just kidding. <laughs> hey, it's fake. This is how we do it. I'll show you. It's fake. It's fake. I'm just, just playing. It's real. But people are like, yeah, no. Well, I mean, obviously they didn't just say, uh, well, well, they didn't take her back for sure. I mean, I'm sure some people did. It's it's hard to say we're not alive in the 1890, you know, or 1880s, whatever. It's hard to say exactly, but yeah, she wow. she tried to go back on it. That's crazy. Now, there under the pseudonym Mrs. Spencer, Maggie revealed several tricks of her profession, including the way mediums wrote messages on blank slates by using their teeth or feet, but she never reconciled with Sister Leah, who died in 1890. Now, Kate died two years later while on a drinking spree. Maggie passed away eight months later in March 1893. Wow. Now, that year, spiritualists formed the National Spiritualist Association, which today is known as the National Spiritualist Association of Churches. In 1904, schoolchildren playing in the sisters' childhood home in Hydesville, known locally as, quote, the Spook House, discovered the majority of a skeleton between the earth and crumbling cedar walls. A doctor was consulted, who estimated that the bones were about 50 years old giving credence to the sister's tale of spiritual messages from a murdered peddler. Oh. So I 
I mean, that what? is that is a, so like you hear the story, right? You're like the fake, the fake, the fake. Oh, oh shit! They there. There's some truth here. There, there was a body in the house. That body, the, wow. the bones and stuff that they claimed were there, were there. So the stuff, the stuff that they ended up talking about was true. Turned out to kind of be true. Wow. If that's a coincidence, that is a top notch coincidence. That's wow. That's crazy. I, got, I told you that's crazy. Wow. Right? So, so this is why spiritualism basically still exists today because right. even though she came out and spoke against it, it's Said like we're all fake, we're all fake, but yet the crap that they were talking yeah. in the beginning that everyone was like, whoa, whoa, whoa. turns out to be true. Was true. Whoa. Uh, but not everyone was convinced. The New York Times reported that the bones had created, quote, a stir amusingly disproportioned to any necessary significance of the discovery, unquote, and suggested that the sisters had merely been clever enough to exploit a local mystery. Even if the bones were that of a murdered peddler, the Times concluded, quote, there will still remain that dreadful confession about the clicking joints, which reduces the whole case to a farce. Oh, yeah. And that is the problem. Yep. Now, five years later, another doctor examined the skeleton and determined that it was made up of, quote, only a few ribs with odds, uh, odds and ends of bones, and among them a superabundance of some and a deficiency of others. Among them also were some chicken bones, unquote. Mm. So there were human bones, but there were some chicken bones, and basically, uh, like... Too many or not enough ribs and too many legs or not enough legs. For like bits and pieces? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> but like too many of some things, not enough of another. Uh, that's weird. Now, he also reported a rumor that a man living near the spook house had planted the bones as a practical joke, but uh, was much too ashamed to come clean. So he just has human bones laying around? I guess. Well, I mean, I'm sure he just dug them up. This was, I mean, yeah, we're, bar- we're barely out of the Old West days. Uh Oh, that's weird. Now, in 1915, the old Fox House was purchased by B.F. Bartlett of Cambridge, Pennsylvania, who had it dismantled and removed to the Lilydale Spiritualist Camp in western New York. During the week of December 4th through the 7th, 1927, an international Hydesville Memorial and Spiritualist Congress was held at Rochester, and it was resolved to erect a 25-foot monument to commemorate the advent of spiritualism at Hydesville. In 1948, a centennial celebration of the Hydesville events was held at Lilydale. And then, later in 1955, the building was totally destroyed by a fire, destroying that which was left of the story of the Fox Sisters for good. Wow. And that is the story of the Fox Sisters. That was a roller coaster. It's a definite roller coaster. Whoa. Right? Because it starts out and it's like, oh, these girls can talk to spirits. And then it's like, just kidding. Because now <laughs> they even say they can't talk to spirits. Oh, but wait, just kidding. Because the stuff they talked about is real. Wait a second. Maybe. <laughs> wow. Which is why even her confession wasn't able to take down spiritualism altogether. Because right. when they discovered bones and whatnot... Or even people like, you know, like, I'm not going to name channels, but, you know, there's some channels where people just, it doesn't matter what they do. They're, they're, they have believers. Yeah. So, like, even, you know, the people, there were some people who just never stopped believing. There were people who probably disbelieved and when they found the bones, they were like, it's real. So, it was just, it's so up and down, but it just never went away. And then, again, like I said earlier, just, even if they are fake, it doesn't take away from the fact that there could be something. Right. And that's what... Paranormal investigating is about now. Real paranormal investigating. Not a lot of this crap we see on online. It's about finding out if it's real. Is there truth to it? Yeah. Is, is there something behind it? And sometimes you do get something paranormal. And paranormal doesn't always mean ghosts. It just means something out of the normal. Mm-hmm. And what's crazy is like with their story, you know, it created such a controversy, but it still built this culture mm-hmm. around quote spiritualism or paranormal or whatever you want to call it it's still spiritual made it big yeah and huge and brought it into light and i feel like it just kind of took off and you know became its own thing and people 
take advantage of it a lot. Well, but if it wasn't for the Fox sisters, we we would have never had lots of other people that came along, like mm-hmm. the Warrens. Mm-hmm. And then yeah, uh, Most Haunted was the first ghost hunting show, but that was in England. And then we had Taps and everything. And I was going to yeah. go through all these, but half of them we've already talked about, and most almost all of them you guys already know about. So what's the point? We know we know the story from from here. Um, but this is basically, this is the reason that we have the paranormal stuff that we have today and the way that we have it is because of these people. But because of her confession way back when is also why when people stand up and start making popping sounds, we're not going to just say you're lying, but we're going to say, take your shoes off and let us see. hundred percent. You know, it, it, you have to prove it. People aren't just going to blindly follow you. I mean, some people will, but logical people are not just going mm-hmm. to get behind you unless you show us what it is you're doing. And honestly, just like everybody else, this is the last time I want to talk about Cody and Satori or any of this stuff again. Um, but I'm going to, I'm going to be honest with you. I don't believe them. I do not believe them. I am definitely on board with that. I do not either. Um, I think it's, I think maybe started out. Hold on, hold on. I, it's been a long time. I got to do this. Okay. Is it real? Hell no. <laughs> I mean, do I think the Fox sisters are real? I don't. I don't. I personally do not think the Fox sisters are real. I'm sorry. I think the sister coming out was a big tell that I don't care if she recanted her statement. Mm-hmm. She needed money. She was an alcoholic. Yeah. She was, you know, probably already dying. She needed the money, so she recanted. But her coming to show you how they did it, that's a big tell for me. I'm sorry. For me, that is a big thumbs down. That is an absolute no. But I do appreciate their bringing it into the spotlight. Yeah, absolutely. And like I I was saying earlier, it created a culture. And I don't believe in them either. Um, They were the Cody and Satori of the 1800s. (laughs) I just, I think people want to make paranormal out to be this constant in your face all the time thing. And it's, it's just not, it's not, it happens when it happens. And most of the time it rarely happens. It's very rare. In comparison to, you know, living out a full day, how often is paranormal going to happen? Like not very often. I've had it. Oh, maybe. 15 things Mm -hmm. since I was eight years old. So 30 years. I've had like maybe three. Like what? And you know, or maybe four, maybe three or four, but I'm 43. And Cody and story, if you want everybody to stop running their mouths, then just do the, do the things that they want. Take Take your shoes off. Take your shoes off or, you know, like do the things they're asking you. Nobody's asking you to do anything ill. Like, just show us that you're you're for real, and mm-hmm. and everybody will. I mean, then you will really see success. Yeah, you know, the worst thing you did was go on YouTube and fake stuff because people Absolutely. on YouTube, while there are people who blindly follow, there are more people who will ruthlessly call you out, mm-hmm. and that's what happened. And some of those people who ruthlessly may have called them out, <laughs> we plan to have on our show. That's right. That's right. Shout out to uh, if you really want to like start learning about. Um, like paying attention to what these people are faking. You yeah. check out the shape. We've mentioned him on the on the show before. Yes. Love the um, shape. You check out the side eye guy. Fantastic videos. Super super good videos. Uh, Beardo, great debunker. Yes, uh, and a, also a ghost hunter. And also a ghost hunter. That's right. Looking yep. for the truth though. Not, Absolutely. N- not faking stuff. Yep. Uh, and look out for another guy named Purple. Uh, I don't think you know who Purple is. I do know. He's another one. He's he's friends with uh, Beardo, but another okay. great debunker. And these guys like. There's more. Like, don't get me wrong. Those are just the ones we watch yes. now. For now. We will end up getting to everybody. But they're they're trying to keep it honest. They want they want truth. They want honest investigation. And I don't think these days we're getting much of that. There are some, but not many. Yeah. I I agree. And we love watching all of these people. We love their shows. We love what they do mm-hmm. for the paranormal community. Absolutely. And uh I think that's it for this one. <gasps> Our I'm, first one back. I know. Not it's even sh- not even sure what we're doing next week, so stay tuned. Yeah. And uh oh god, it's been so long. Where can they find us? See if I remember. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> they can find us on Instagram at for the booze underscore podcast and on Facebook at for the booze. That's right. You can find us on YouTube at you guessed it for the booze. You can find us on X Twitter at for the booze also on the tiggity tiggity talks. And soon you'll be able to find videos of us on uh, YouTube as well. Yeah. So we are literally going to be everywhere. And don't forget, Super excited. if you have a story, which unbelievably for two months we were gone and nobody sent a story, um, but send your personal stories or suggestions of places you'd like us to cover or teams you'd like us to cover at for the boost 12 at gmail.com. That's right. And one more very important thing because we want to get sponsors on this show. I'm tired of like acting like I don't want to. I do want to. Yes, rate and review. That's right. Don't give us four stars. Don't give us three stars or two stars or one. <laughs> give us five stars. And then you can say, I hate you guys. I don't care after the five stars. Do what you got to do. Yeah. You can say whatever you want. <laughs> do what Who you, cares? Do what you got to do. But Tell us what your favorite color is. Yeah, you whatever. know? I guess this is where we're going to end it because I'm got to. i going to have to edit this thing. It is. Well, thank you, everybody, so much for listening on our first episode back. That's right. We appreciate you so very much. That's right, we do. We do. And yeah. we will see you in the next one. See you in the next one. The Bye. boys are back in town. The boys hey are back yo. in town. Bye. I wanted to sing my song.